Hello, my name is Selena. And my name is Theoni, and you are listening to Piping Hot. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome, welcome. I'm just trying different welcome messages now. (laughs) I feel like I got to give it another try one of these days because I tried it once and I almost had an aneurysm, but I feel like I could maybe do it. I I think you got it. Like, you you got this. (laughs) It's just terrifying. Like, hi. Like, what? How do you do it? I don't understand. That's like me whenever I try to start a conversation with someone. Like, don't. Oh, fair. (laughs) My gosh. I... Oh, yeah. As I've gotten older, I've gotten way more socially anxious like that. Like I used to be able to start a conversation with literally anyone. But now it's hard for me sometimes. I think the pandemic like fucked us up too. Because I used to be so eloquent. Okay. Okay. All those college presentations where it's like you have to present for 20 minutes. I could be like, "Mm, I could do that and like literally prepare the night before and then just do it. Now I have to like prepare for like anything. And it's just so weird. No, it is so weird. Did I ever tell you about the speech I gave in college? Yes, for your master's, right? No. No, you said there was something that you're for your master's that you had to like present something. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that was a different. Oh, that was a different thing. That was still presenting on a case. Yeah, that was crazy. Nope. (laughs) The thing I'm talking about was an undergrad in my speech class, my public speaking class. And I had to give like a ceremonial speech. So I made up an entire backstory and story about my sister and her husband. My sister's not even dating somebody. And I gave a whole speech on her and this guy and like made up a whole story it was great but it was very nerve-wracking so <laughs> I, i'm gonna save that one day for when she actually gets married i'm gonna i'm that gonna would use it. actually be really funny <laughs> it would be a tearjerker yeah. and the best part is this guy had a name he had all the details so damn i'm impressed i'm really impressed <laughs> it was fun i was like nobody knows my life so why yeah. not lie about it and have fun you know so how's your week been? It's been good. It's just been busy. I mean, again, just December is like a clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's going good. I think earlier this week it was like really slow, um, but it was really busy today. You know what? That's what I was going to tell you, that I was just like really annoyed with people today because mm-hmm. we have a timeline but no one follows this timeline. Mm-hmm. So it's like, then why do we have it in the first place? Like if no, no one's going to reference it and we're just throwing darts at the wall whenever anything comes up, I'm like, then why are we wasting time putting this timeline together? And then me trying to scramble and cover, like I just don't understand. It's kind of like, why would I write a script if you're just going to improvise the entire fucking time? Yes, literally. What's the point? Wow, that is such a good analogy. I was but how frustrating. Yeah, really. It's like, oh, hey, like you put the calendar together. I need this thing by Friday. And they're like, oh, actually, that's not going to happen. You put the calendar together. What do you mean it's not going to happen? Also, the ner- I just feel like if I was working under somebody, because I know you like lead a team and stuff like If I'm working under somebody and they tell me I have to get something done, I'm going to work my butt off to get it done. I don't just say, oh, sorry, can't do that. Like when my supervisors give me a case for the day, I don't just say, oh, sorry, not in the mood, can't do that. Like, no, that's not how a job works. Yeah. And I think what the worst part is, is that like my position, I have to go back to clients and explain why we're not going to make the Friday deadline, even though we shared the timeline with them and we told them that Friday deadline would be feasible. And so it's like, well, it puts me in a shitty position where it's like, okay, you made the timeline and I'm trying to track to it, but you can't do your stuff on your end. Like we talked about this before where it's like I'm relying on someone, but no one's doing their job. So it's like it just sucks. <laughs> How irritating. Dude. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Ugh. Yeah. Which is why I'm drinking stress relief today. This so episode, I, baby. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Yogi Stress Relief. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally sponsor us. I need to start making some money on these extracurriculars I'd be doing. Okay. <laughs> I just like need to chill the fuck out because I was pissed yesterday <laughs> and today, and I'm just like Selena, you're fine. Take a deep breath 
and then also drink like so many fucking cups of stress relief (laughs) (laughs) no i i totally feel you i feel like i just like haven't relaxed for the past three days like so my friend was visiting from Mm -hmm. thursday through monday morning i drove her to the airport at like 3 45 in the morning oh my god all this stuff and like it was like a great weekend like i was so happy to have her here it was super fun but then going into work that monday after getting up early and then Working Tuesday, I had this training because our whole company is basically making a huge shift come January. So I went to a training for that today after Mm. my alarm didn't wake me up this morning. And then (laughs) just all this stuff, it just feels like it's been chaos. And I have not had time to like do something for myself. The best thing that I got to doing something for myself was watching White Lotus with my roommates the other day, which I saw this tweet that was like, only like two things happen per episode in White Lotus, but somehow I'm still on the edge of my seat. <laughs> and like, honestly, that's so true because like that show is so weird and I'm like, what's happening? But somehow I want to keep watching. Like it is kind of addictive. Where is it streaming again? HBO Max. Oh my gosh. I literally HBO Max had a deal on Black Friday and I was like, oh, I should have gotten it. And I did it and now I regret it. Oh, because I want to watch I want to watch um House of the Dragon as well. Oh, yeah. Um, Damn. Oh, my gosh. OK, maybe they'll like revive the deal and I'll just I'll buy it that time. <laughs> no, you got it. Maybe they'll have like a New Year deal or something. Yes. Yeah. Cross and the only fingers. reason I can watch it between my roommates and I, we have pretty much all of the streaming things. So like we're good to go. But that's the benefit of like living with roommates, I guess. So. Yeah. See, I am the provider for my family. Like, yeah. all of my <laughs> siblings have Disney Plus and Hulu, which are mine. Gotcha. And then they also have my Amazon Prime. <laughs> like, dang, girl. <laughs> I know. And then we're still on um, my husband's mom's Netflix account. <laughs> That's amazing. All of you are on it. That's so I know. funny. I like I just can't buy I I can't buy Netflix. Like I, I can't pay for that yet. Like I no. that's another step I'm not willing to take when I can no. still use hers. But that's the hard part about all these streaming services. It's just like it it adds up so fast and it's, I just do not have the money for that. So that's ridiculous. why I feel like sharing accounts is definitely like yeah. the way to go. But that's a big no no. Who okay. cares? Ugh, <laughs> suck my yeah. ass. Literally. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Screw you, dude. If you're gonna try to make me pay fifteen ninety nine for your freaking falling for Christmas ass <laughs> movies, I'm out. <gasps> oh my Forget goodness. about it. Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah. I, what were we talking about? I don't know. I was literally just going to ask you that. What okay. You oh, I, your life? You oh, yeah, had training? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's pretty crazy. But I hope the new company switchover will go well. We're definitely yeah. going more for like a community focus. So we're not going to be in the hospitals as much, which I think oh. could go well. It could go not well. I think I'm just going to have to tell myself to chill because obviously like the whole the whole company is switching over. So I need to give a couple months for everything to get set in place because it's going to be a huge mess when it first starts because like we're trying to get used to it. Like our big phone number that people would call in crisis is changing and all these different things are changing. So it's just going to be a big adjustment. So trying to get used to that. I will say I, as you were explaining that, I had like a visceral reaction because I hate change. Like I just, change is so uncomfy, but I know it's like the saying of like, oh, if it makes you uncomfy, then do it because like you won't do it otherwise. So I'm like, at a point, I'm like, okay, I understand, but I also hate change and you can't make me do anything. (laughs) Same. I I can deal with change as long as it's very structured and predictable. (laughs) Oh, yeah. But like if it's not, then I just like, it's too much. Yeah, no, I agree. (laughs) Or I I think honestly, it's less about change. And at least for me, it's more about the feeling of like not being able to control it. Mm. Like... Oh, when things feel so out of my grasp, it just feels like too much. Like if I know what to expect, I can deal. But yeah. like if I don't know what to expect and like I can't control it and it's just like a huge mess and there's nothing I can do about it, that stresses me out. 
interesting. I, I think I'm a little bit like that, but more so I hate it because I don't know like what I'm doing. Like mm. I hate that. Like it could, everything else could be a mess, but if I don't know what I'm doing, then I hate it. Like I just like, I feel like I need to know what I'm doing in order to be okay with the change. But then mm. if the change is also where it's like, I don't know what I'm doing, then that makes me really anxious. <laughs> okay, fair enough. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So we hate change and yeah. that's that. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, do you have some pop culture stuff for today? Um, <laughs> really boring stuff. Okay, me too. <laughs> so enjoy, listeners. Yeah, really. Because you guys come to us for all the pop culture stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start with the most boring thing. Okay. I don't know if you saw. I don't watch Good Morning America, but there was a <gasps> whole affair thing about the two news anchor. And like last weekend, their pictures leaked of them like going on a freaking weekend getaway. I don't know these people, but it was juicy and I was eating it up. And now yes, it's like me too. it's like disappeared into the void. Like it's already kind of like done because they they both were taken off air. I cannot believe that, like, they were taken off air for that. Also, were their photos on vacation, like, them, like, doing something, something? Or were they just, like, on a vacation or, like... They were just on a vacation, but I think it was, like, there There was some pictures of them, like, kissing and touching. Like, oh. clearly, like, not what coworkers should do, you know? Mm. Wait, so the issue was that they were coworkers and not that they were, like, married to other people? Oh, no, they're both married. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, that's gotcha. the thing. Mm. They're both married. They're co-anchors together on Good Morning America. And I think the reason why they were pulled off of air is because Good Morning America didn't want that to cloud what they're reporting, which a part of me from like a PR standpoint, that makes sense. But also it just like sucks too. Yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, they have each other though. So... <laughs> At least there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> okay. The first thing okay. that I have on my list. So Kirstie Alley died. Um, I I just have to share what my um my roommate texted because okay, let me <laughs> I was walking upstairs the other day and I heard her gasp and then I looked and my phone, and in all caps, first text, she said, Kirsty Alley died. And then the next text, in all caps, this is so irrelevant, but I'm shocked. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was literally cracking up. But, like, I guess I never saw Kirsty Alley in anything besides, like, Dancing with the Stars way back in the literally day. Literally same. Like, yeah, exactly. Same. Like, And that's what my roommate was saying, too. So, um, I mean... Best wishes to her and her family. But I don't really know, like, what she was in. Or, yeah. But I know she had a pretty lucrative career, so. Ooh, she, that was a good word. Lucrative? Look good. at me go. Look at you go. <laughs> Tired, stressed, but you're still eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I did not know that. I it must have been buried in all of my news stuff. But, um, she, same with you. I don't know her from a lot of stuff, but she is recognizable. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I know her if I see yeah. her. Exactly. Okay. What's your next thing, pal? Um, my next one is that Emily in Paris season three is premiering December 21st. And there are so many promo pictures. They're all doing press and it's literally amazing. I am eating it up and I'm so excited. I am so excited ready for the new <laughs> season i am going to eat it up yeah like, i i don't know what it is about this show but it is just so good it's so like good like it's so cheesy like it it really leans into like being cheesy and yes. stuff but it works that's what we and that's what we've always said on this podcast if yeah. we've been consistent about one thing it's like if you're gonna be cheesy and campy you yes. have to lean into it if you don't you suck but exactly. like this does it perfectly yeah. and it's so good like i constantly like i'm just so addicted to it's so show. good so if anyone hasn't seen it yet please binge the two seasons on netflix the third is coming out on december 21st it is literally so good i like can't stop raving about it because i love it also the cast is like so attractive <laughs> like all of them all of them 
literally it doesn't make sense i'm sorry but alfie has <laughs> does something to me he is so hot he is like <laughs> so hot like speechless how and why like how, how <laughs> and why <laughs> i just he is so hot and a part of me is like in the show i'm like emily why wouldn't you just choose him you know like oh gosh anyways anyways but then there's gabriel who like is attractive in a different way but I like no he's so, so sweet though like and i also love <gasps> me a chef <laughs> I love me a chef. I love a man with an axe. They both have what? accents. And yeah. they're different, but they're both so... Oh, my God. Oh, my god! That gosh. literally, that whole show just makes me, like, thirsty. Yes! Really? <laughs> it's crazy. <sighs> it's crazy. Um, That was one of my pop culture things as well. So nice. if you guys have not seen the trailer, go watch that now. It's yes. very exciting. Um, And then the only other pop culture thing i have is that the masked singer winner was revealed so um spoiler alert it was amber riley from glee yes. which okay how can she okay but the thing is other good singers have gone on the show and like not one for example tori kelly has i was just gone gonna say tori kelly one. Yep. um who's the other one that went on the show uh jojo i think jojo went on the show and did not win Maybe. what i could okay. be wrong wait i'm sorry can you explain the concept of how do you win the mass singer like what does that mean well here's the thing i'm acting excited about this but i've never watched a show all oh, the way okay, through. Okay. but like i think basically they start with different groups of people and slowly like the audience votes people out based on their performances and stuff um and then i think by the end there's a few people and then, yeah, before someone's eliminated, the judges make their guess. Yes, yeah, I've seen is. that. I've so. seen that. So it's it's weird because again, the whole Tori Kelly thing. I remember hearing like how she didn't win, and it was such like a huge snub because it's literally Tori Kelly. Yeah, literally. Um, so that's I guess I just don't know the logistics of how to win the mess. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I, I, here's the thing. I think I would actually love watching that show, but I hate all the in-between stuff. Same. Like, I don't care. It's just, just like, like, get me to the performances. Like, I exactly. do not care about your commentary. I just care about the performer. Exactly. Um, I do know that the first season, what's his name? T-Pain won. <gasps> he was fantastic. Fantastic. So amazing. So amazing. Yeah. Ugh, love it. Um, But yes, Amber Riley very much deserved. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I have a couple things still. Okay. Um, I don't watch soccer, but it's pop culture. And everyone <laughs> else does in the world. So um, the men team, the U.S. men's team, lost in the World Cup, unfortunately. To Netherlands. Stupid. Yeah. I was in. I was at breakfast with my friend who came to visit yeah. me in Boston, actually. We were in this bar, and we had, like, all these mimosas and <laughs> a huge screen, and it was crowded. And Damn. everyone, like, it was so fun to watch in a group of people. But we were also doing horrible. I was like, have y'all ever played soccer? Like, <laughs> I'm so uncoordinated. Like, I feel like I could do better than you right now. Please. Okay, but that's that's how I watch basketball. I'm yeah. like, you can't make a free throw. Put me in, coach. I can't make a free throw. Like, <laughs> I just. Uh, but in my head, the concept of a free throw is so easy. Where it's like, hmm. this is your job. Why can't you do it? So literally part of me understands. Yeah. Where it's like. Your job is to kick a ball and run across the field. Like, why aren't you doing that? No, literally, exactly. And like, the yeah, I could never do it, but I'm still like, I know. get your shit together. I know. I mean that way. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so unfortunately they lost. But I know because I was getting updates of them like winning the next match, the next match. And then unfortunately they lost. So, mm -hmm. uh, OK, my next thing. Maybe I've been living under a rock, but Kiki Palmer is pregnant. Yeah. Kiki Palmer is pregnant. Yes. I guess she I guess she um showed her baby bump on SNL, which yes. I will have to go back and watch her like skits and stuff because yeah. I think she's hilarious. Um so I don't know if she's dating somebody, if it was like a di I I have no idea her situation, but like, good for her. Yeah. I feel like she'll be a fantastic mom. Oh, so. she'd be like a hilarious. She's the cool. She'd mom. be the fun. She is the cool <laughs> mom, one hundred percent. But I agree. I like. I didn't know that like Kiki Palmer 
had a partner or if she does mm-hmm. have a partner right now. Like, I, I don't know. Again, mm-hmm. I maybe I'm just living under a rock. But also, maybe that goes to say that, like, the media doesn't focus on that, which good for her because she is amazing. Yeah, literally. Which goes into my next thing. She did a skit on SNL, a, a song called Big Boys. Have you heard it? No. It's with her and, like, the female cast of SNL and SZA. And it's so funny. It's really? like... So, like, Lonely Island reminiscent of it oh. with, like, Adam Sandler and, or – not Sandler. And um, what's his last name? Sandberg? Yes. Thank you. I was like, oh, dear Lord. It starts with an S, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, Lonely Island-esque that it's so funny and just so good. Like, you have to – you okay. have to watch it. Okay, I will go and watch it, I promise. <laughs> um, but that's it for what I have for pop culture. Do you want to do what you're consuming, reading, watching? Oh, sure. Well, here, let me say this before we get into that. Okay. Our topic of today's episode is nothing. Basically, Mm -hmm. we wanted to just get on here and chat about a bunch of stuff randomly. And, right? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Life has been so busy that, like, picking a topic, I was like, that is already too much to do no literally taking a shower is also way too much to do i can't even pick a topic so no literally but we promise it's gonna be so entertaining it's gonna be so entertaining (laughs) so just listen along and come along for the ride of the chaos (laughs) when aren't we chaos though like (laughs) the beginning of last week's episode was freaking crazy yeah like were we what? on crack? We don't do drugs, but we were on crack. <laughs> no, we were on we we were doing something. We yeah. were doing something. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're consuming. The first thing I think we can both talk about is that um ourselves and one of my friends, Denise, and your friend too. Now I you guys mm-hmm. are friends. That's what I'm just saying. I don't care. Um, <laughs> but we're all reading Merry Little Meet Cute together by by Julie Sierra- Murphy and Sierra Simone. Yes. Right. So today, as we're recording this, we read it in like three days. So this is our last day reading it. And then we're going to discuss it. Um, Yeah. So that's what I've been reading lately. I thought, I don't know. I finished it. Selena hasn't. So I'll hold off on saying all of my thoughts. But, you know, it was a cute story. It was spicy. But I just personally didn't feel super connected to either of the characters. Like I just, the plot was kind of thrown all over the place so I don't know I didn't like love love it but it was like a fun easy read yes definitely if you're looking for a fun quick easy read that's like Christmassy slash like holiday-esque it's that's definitely your read but like don't put your expectations to the sky yeah I think I think it's just like fun you know (laughs) yeah exactly so what are you planning on reading afterward Okay, so here's the thing. I have so many books on my TBR that I truly I just like have no idea. And honestly, I think I'm going to take a little break from reading because Good. I really, really want to focus on my writing because I yes. just have had no time at all recently yeah. to write and I'm really craving that. So I think I'm going to hold off on reading anything at least for like a week or so and just Good. really try to crank out some of my writing and stuff like that um which I'm still in the middle of doing my first full round of edits and stuff like that so that's kind of where I'm at in the book writing process but we will get there eventually um I'm really excited to get back to my book because I think as I'm rewriting it I'm like okay I feel like it's starting to come together in a way that like I'm proud of whereas like when I first finished it, I was like, oh, did I just waste so much time on a shitty book? Yeah. You know, like <laughs> yeah. the imposter syndrome really started to set in. So yeah, I'm I'm starting to feel more confident the more that I'm like really getting to the meat of it. So. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm so excited <laughs> for you. I know because like, again, I know your life has been so incredibly crazy that you just haven't had time, which yeah. is like totally fine because, again, the holidays, December, it's all crazy. But mm-hmm. I'm, like, so excited Aww, for you thanks. to, like, jump back in. Like, <laughs> you're making me want to go back and revise now. But I ha- okay. I'm i on a break, okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So you have finished your first draft. So you're just taking a little break. Or first draft and first round of edits. Correct. And yeah. now you're just on a little break before you go back in again. Yes. Before I do my second round of revisions, okay. uh, which is crazy because it's been like literally three months and I'm like, I need to chill. <laughs> so 
I think after reading A Merry Little Meet Cute, I'm going to read Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, who is uh-huh. the same writer of Six Crimson Cranes, which I told you about. It's a young yeah. it's a young adult fantasy, but I've heard that Spin the Dawn is Mulan meets Project Runway, and I'm so <gasps> excited. Wait, that is such a cool description. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> so I am so excited. And again, I think I just need to get into like the young adult fantasy mindset before yeah. jumping back into round two of revisions. But I sense. am so excited. I've heard it so good. OK, I will need like a full review when yes. you're done. Yes, I will. Very nice. As far as shows that I'm watching right now, Mm -hmm. I am still trying to catch up on the Kardashians because I Mm. haven't been able to watch a lot of TV. Um, And yeah, I think that's basically what I'm watching right now. I mean, I mentioned White Lotus earlier in the episode, so I'm on season two of that. I'm almost caught up with my roommates with all of the episodes that are out already. Um, Highly recommend. But those have kind of been the shows that I'm watching right now. How about you? Very nice. Um, Wait, one question. White Lotus, Theo James is in it, right? But only in season two or both seasons? No, Theo James is only in season two. And my man's, <laughs> he is so hot. And I will say in this season, in this se- or in this show, yeah. he's a big a-hole. Like he is. Just my type. Yeah. Just kidding. The- I'm kidding. Th- that's literally what I said to my roommates. <laughs> I literally said the other day, I'm like, oh, he's such a jerk. And they're like, oh, yeah, you like that, though. And I was like, I sure do. Like, <laughs> you called me out. <laughs> no, literally. Um, You do get to see his butt. Very nice. I will always take well, a chance. Any TV show to see his butt. Because his- we saw him in The Time Traveler's Life, too. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's is just like aging like fine wine and i'm like he sir is. you need to stop <laughs> no literally why men just get attractive as they get older like i just feel I like generally but then i feel like they either get significantly hotter or i don't need to shit on an entire gender but like i just you know <laughs> so i'll stop oh what i'm gosh. saying okay but um what am i watching i am almost done with season three of debt to me um i have one more episode left and theoni it gets wild okay i need to jump back into it like i really wasn't feeling the beginning of season three i'm gonna be honest Mm. which was a little disappointing because i'm like wow i really loved season one and two yeah just wait and it gets crazy and i'm like Dang. what the fuck is happening what is happening and it's so again it just like made me fall in love with the characters because again i really really loved season one and two and season three it's wild okay that makes me so excited to jump yeah. back into it yeah okay good um i think that's it that i'm watching but yeah okay nice okay this is a very 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 mm. random thing okay but i just feel like Everyone needs to know about this. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So Chris Brown's album Mm -hmm. came out back in June. And I didn't give it a listen at the time. I was like, whatever. But we all know at this point, if you've been listening to the podcast, that I am obsessed with Under the Influence by Chris Brown. Yeah, we we did our Spotify wrapped last episode. We did. We all know that you that's your top song. (laughs) Yes. Wait, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you, but I listened to Under the Influence at the gym on Spotify. I like queued it up and literally the first lyrics, I could not stop laughing because all I could think about was you. (laughs) And like, it just reminded me of you. And I was like, oh my God, I need to stop laughing in the middle of this gym because I look like a psycho. (laughs) (laughs) I can just like picture that in my head. Oh, I mean, that's an interesting workout song. What kind of workout were you doing, girly? <laughs> I, was, I, I was walking. I was walking on the treadmill, so I wasn't like doing any weights or anything. Fucking but says yeah. yeah. I don't know why this. Literally, oh my god! It why literally, I can't even lazy. talk about it without feeling like I'm like. I would do. I. Nope. What? Nope. Say it. You have to say it now. No, I was just going to say I would do crazy things to that song. I I know. Everyone would. (laughs) Have you seen the choreo to that song that he was supposed to perform? Yes. So good. Like, so good. It makes me feel things. And I'm like, if he performed this, I would have not survived. No, truly. I would have never survived. Yes. 
<sighs> Anyways, so sorry. Chris Brown's <laughs> newest album that came out in June called Breezy. Mm-hmm. There are so many, so many good songs. Yeah. On that album. So one that I shared with Selena was called Psychic, and that features Jack Carlo. Can I play <laughs> yes. clips of these? Of course. Okay, give me one second to pull it up. Because there's just two songs I need to show okay. you. Okay. This song starts with Chris Brown, whatever. Then Jack Carlo jumps in with his verse. Yes. His verse does something to me. <sighs> I'm convinced when he sings that verse, he's talking about me. And so when I listen to it, I'm like, Jack Harlow is talking about me. No, he is. He is. He's talking about well, each and every one of what's us. That, what's that lyric? It's like that little no. body of yours. Yes, oh, that's what I'm going to play. That's what okay. okay, okay, ready? <laughs> Motors off you, but tell me, would you slide for me if I call for you? Up in the shower, let me wash that club off of you. And I got some cold gate for that Cosmigos. I know that tequila aggravates you out the ego. And that little body that you got is like a cheat code. You a sweetheart, but I know that you a freak, though. Freak. I know you at the club sipping Clego, rapping. T- I can't even listen to more, otherwise I'm going to, like, feel things like that. I know you are a sweetheart, but you're a freak, though. Me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's the Jack Harlow effect. Like, we've gone through this earlier this year, and we're just, like, going back to it again. Like, it's just, like, what? Like, what did you put in that verse? <laughs> no, I, I. it's his voice. Like, I've been going back to his album now again. Like, yeah. I've been listening to Like a Blade of Grass again because yeah. that song makes me want to shake my ass. <laughs> like, it's like... like Dua hey, Lipa. Hey, hey. I love Dua Lipa. And then the whole TikTok that I sent you of him yes. meeting Dua Lipa. <laughs> yes! Oh, my gosh. But, yes. So, Chris Brown's part in that song is great, too. So, yeah. just go listen to the song. The other song i need to show you is called hmm okay hmm. okay <laughs> it okay <laughs> let me just show you okay but he okay. has so many good features on this song like he has a song called possessive with lil wayne he has a song Ooh. called sex memories with lmi he had like oh my god he i has love her so- that's what i'm saying like so many good songs there's also this song he has called hit my line which is a bop and i don't know why it didn't like get on the radio mm. like it's so good. Okay, but here's... Let me find the... Okay, I think... Hold on. You're going to think I'm ridiculous. But the way he Probably. sings is... Hmm, I can't do it. But it sounds like... It sounds like to me... Okay, just listen to it and then I'll tell you what it sounds okay, like. Okay, sounds good. Can I get a taste? It's yep. almost not even a hmm. It's like a, uh, uh, it's like U-H instead. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And it's literally like, and he's saying, can I get a taste? Like, he's literally talking about eating somebody out. <laughs> and it sounds like he just, like, cannot get enough. And he's so, like, shook that he's overwhelmed. Yeah. Like, it's like he's so turned on. He's like, ugh, you know? Yeah. Damn. That song does something to me. Okay, wait. I have to show you this one more lyric in this song. Okay. You're going to fucking lose your mind. Hold on. If you think the hmm, can I get a taste? Like. Spread your legs, make you open wide. Put your lips on my chin. I like, I gotta like to come twice. Give it is. I like the girl I like to come twice. Hello? <laughs> I, I need you to make yourself a smart playlist of all these songs on spotify i have a spicy songs playlist please 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 i'll share it with make you. it yes make it public and to all of our fans because clearly they're very interested in this too <laughs> no i no i literally have a spicy songs playlist and it's on private because i'm too scared to share it with people because i feel like they'll judge me but like there's this one song on that's on that it's called storms by honors and that song is like an enemies to lovers mm. like okay you have to send it to me send me the whole <laughs> entire playlist okay i will i will 
Can I get a taste? Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's so good. Sorry. Okay, anyways. I will say, I did look at his um album on Spotify when you told me about uh, the song with Jack Harlow. Mm-hmm. The only reason why I haven't listened to it is because it's so long. It there are a lot of there songs on that like album. are a million songs, and the thing is, is like when I listen to albums for the first time, I like to sit down and listen through all the way mm. to make sure that like I'm listening, which yeah. like sucks because then I can't put it on the background. Um, so that's the only reason why I haven't listened to it yet, but I I should. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. What is, like, your go-to, like, what is a good spicy song that you know if I'm always looking for more? Okay, wait, let me see. Do you have a playlist? Um, an wait, old oh, playlist. Oh, what's that one song called? There's a lot of <laughs> Not the Reddit song. Not the fucking Reddit song. How dare you? Um, I guess I don't have, like... A one spicy song, but like there are just like songs that like give you that vibe. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yes. Um, I don't know if I have any like off the top of my head. Okay, well, I can't find it now, but I will send you some of the songs that I would consider spicy. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I'll send that to you. And then you have to share that playlist with me because I do truly want to listen to it. OK, great. I will. You want to hear another random song off this on the playlist? Yes. And then I have a song that I want to talk about with you. <gasps> OK, OK. Um, Just listen to the beginning of this. OK. So like if this this is like the vibe of my playlist right here. Ready? OK. So if that tells you anything. That's like sultry. Yep. (laughs) It sure is. Okay, what's the song you want to show me? Okay, so it's kind of blown up on TikTok. It's called Escapism by Ray. Have Hmm. you heard it? No. Okay, well, it was like trending on TikTok like a couple days ago. And I was like, oh, this kind of like hits. And I listened to the whole song. And now I work out to it because it's just like so good. Um, Okay. Here, let me see if I can play a little snippet and this is like the little snippet that's like going viral on tiktok right now okay i think at least But yeah, okay. I think it's a vibe. Every, so- every song that I've heard from Ray sounds like it should be in a Step Up movie. Yeah. Oh like, do you remember that yes. other one I sent you called Hard Out Here? Yes. She is so and underrated. Like, that was she who we should have talked about. Yeah. Because there are some songs that I've listened to from her that are so good. Um, so I'm, I'm happy she's getting, like, the attention now with this song on TikTok. But yeah. Yeah. She's great. She's Absolutely. Great. Okay. Can I just say another random thing? Yes. And I need a final input. So you know that I'm getting my hair cut soon. No. Oh, I'm getting my <laughs> hair cut soon. <laughs> Me too. When? Really? Wait. Yeah. Oh. Ah! Okay. So December 14th, I oh, am God. chopping it. I'm chopping it. You're I'm donating going my back. hair. You're going back to the, your short leg. Yep. Because oh my goodness. I've been growing it out forever. I always I do this thing for you guys listeners. Like I will grow up my hair for like a few years and then I chop it and I donate yeah. it and then I grow it out again. But this time I think I'm gonna cut it short, but I wanna dye it too. And I cannot <gasps> decide if I wanna go darker or like lighter. Everyone's been telling me to go darker. Mm, going darker would be a vibe. That would be a vibe. You would Enter your main character era in 2023 okay. with darker hair. So maybe I need to do that then. You know what yeah. else I bought that I think what? I want to try tonight? I got self-tanning stuff. <gasps> yes. What kind? I've never tried are- it before. I got Isle of Paradise, which I've heard is really good. Isle of Paradise. Um, 
Maybe I like recognize. I've never it. tried self tanner before because I don't know. I don't care about that stuff. But I was just like, I want to try it for fun because oh. I've never done it before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've yeah, seen this but- brand. Yeah. I want to get like tan and then the dark hair and I feel like that could be a vibe. So I'll have to let you know how it goes. I'll send you pics once I cut it. But so a vibe. I love it. I love it. I'm getting my hair cut on the 17th. But (gasps) I just like it's just going to be a trim and then just to recut my bangs. Um, Okay. But I'm trying to grow it out and leave it long because my sister's wedding is in (gasps) December of next year. So like a year from now. Yeah. And I want it to be long because I'll be on the beach. She's getting married in Mexico. So it's like, I want these like beachy waves. Yes, <laughs> girl. Like, get the beachy waves. Heck yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm just trying to like maintain it as best as I can and try to like grow it as long as I can in 2023. Nice. Okay, um, fun. Keep it healthy, yeah. girl. I know, right? Okay, I'm so sorry. I have to go back to Spotify because then I just okay. realized um, there's this song that I need you to like write a book about. Or someone in the world needs to write a book about it because I feel it? like it's like like friends with benefits who like secretly hate each other, but they are like just doing it just out of like <laughs> just to have fun, but they like don't really like each other and then they fall in love. <laughs> It's gone. You know what's funny? What? Because you know how I'm setting up my book for like it to be like a standalone series potentially? Yes. Yes. That would fit the vibe of no, like stop. what I want for the no. yeah. Okay, uh-huh. wait, wait. Then I have okay, to show, show you the song. Ah, okay. The song is called Um Fuck About It by Water Parks featured Black Bear. And it's so funny because a mutual friend of ours actually told me about this song. Or yeah, oh. this song. So and I was like, I should listen to that song. It's so good. And the vibes are like, oh, OK. Oh, my gosh. Um, OK. Wait, let me see if I can just play the beginning or. Yeah, pull it up, girl. OK, are you ready? <laughs> I think it's just such a vibe and someone needs to write a rom-com about it because I am living. Oh, my gosh. OK. OK. So it's called, again, Fuck About It by Water Parks featured Black Bear. OK. We can Like, they can just, like, fuck about their problems because they don't, they're not going to talk about it. It's, like, it's a vibe. Like, I need someone to write the friends with benefits thing. Will like, you I send just... me a link to that? Yes. Wait, that's so, so good. Oh, my gosh. I just, like, I love it. I love it. I just can't fit any any characters that I'm writing. So, I'm, like, someone else needs to write it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I sent you a TikTok. You sent me a TikTok. But I'll talk about the TikTok that I sent you first about Zoe Deutsch and Glenn Powell about how they need oh, to make yes. another rom-com together. And I tagged you in a comment where they're like, people we meet on vacation. And I was like, shut up. Shut up. Here's my I, hot take. He- I think Zoe is great, right? And I think she could really like embody the main character, Poppy, right? Oh, God, mm-hmm. that's not a good look for me as an Emily Henry fan. Um, <laughs> I think she can do great. The thing is, is that if Glenn Powell is going to be Alex, he needs to reel back his humor. Because I feel like Alex can be funny, but he's not funny all the time the way that Glenn Powell is, you know? Yeah, like Alex is more sweet, I feel like. Yeah. Um, but yeah. here's the thing. I also, as much as I love that, I don't love it because I, I just feel like maybe they look just like a little too old. Like they don't look too yeah. old, but like. But isn't maybe Poppy and isn't Poppy and Alex like they're in their later twenties, early thirties? I thought they were like right out of college. No, maybe they are. No, older. no, because they I'm met ashamed. in college. I'm ashamed. Ah, fake fan, fake fan. No, I'm kidding. Because they met in college, remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think there's late twenties, early thirties. They met in college when Alex drove Poppy home that one time. <laughs> well, I remember the plot of the book, okay? I'm not that fucked up. <laughs> but I- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so the- maybe they are perfect and I just need to shut up. 
The one thing, though, is that, like, the only reason why I would be gunning for them is because their chemistry is almost like Alex and Poppy. Because Alex and Poppy, oh, yeah. we are made to believe that they are best friends for years. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, that would be perfect. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was just like but a fun do we, idea. But do we think they could do spicy scenes? Because Set It Up did not have spicy scenes. Oh, I think so. I definitely think so. (laughs) I definitely think so. Yeah, like the balcony scene, like, uh, okay. (laughs) Remember when that entire book made us wait to find out what happened in Europe and then they literally made out? That was it, yeah. Sorry, spoilers alert. Wait, they did make out, right? Yeah, they did. It was like literally just make out that one time. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, tough. I know. <laughs> Tough. Um, but yeah, so that was that. And then the other TikTok that you sent me was the whole like fictional characters by month. And I swear when I saw January was Reese, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be Rowan. But I didn't want to give my hopes up for November. So I was like, oh, well, if it's not Rowan, then it's as right. But then it was Rowan. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. It could not have been more perfect for us. Truly, truly. Like Reese is literally my husband. <laughs> I need you to marry a tall, lanky guy who has black hair and like carries Did you himself. just describe Reese as lanky? Honey yes! Boo Boo, he is, he is strong. He okay, got no, muscle. No. Here, here is my, here is my take, okay? <laughs> Rowan is like bulky, like Henry Cavill in The Witcher. But I think... Reese is kind of like Thomas Dottery where you can see he's built, but he's not as broad or like okay. muscled as Henry Cavill. Okay, that's fine. But you called him Linky. Oh, please. He's fine. Linky with lean muscles. <laughs> okay, lean. Lean is fine. Linky makes him sound like he's some tall nerd. Like, bro. <laughs> he is a tall nerd, though. What? <laughs> A nerd about Feyre, okay? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, I know everyone says, like, oh, I love Reese. Like, what? You don't love him as much as I do. I know. I know. I know. I can say I love Reese, but I know that I will never, ever love him as much as you do. Same thing with Rowan, right. though. Rowan. Yep, exactly. Like, you will never. Like, you could <laughs> never. <laughs> I'm not like, trying to beat you, okay? Like he's yours. Don't even he's yours, try. <laughs> That's how I same feel. With, also, oh sorry, what were you gonna say? You were gonna say same with As, and I was gonna say same with Dorian. Oh, I was gonna say same with As and Lorcan. Like I okay, just like yeah. don't, don't fuck with me when it comes to that. Don't <laughs> fuck with me when with it comes us? to Reese and Dorian. I, nothing's wrong with us. We love these men, <laughs> and they would love us back. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, I think if I could pull were Lorcan. Real. I could I pull Lorcan. I don't think well, I could pull Well, he would love that Rowan. you're, like, petite. He would I know, love that you're petite. I'm, I think I'm just a little shorter than Elite, because Elite is, like, mm-hmm. five, two, five, three, and I'm five. Mm-hmm. So I think I could definitely pull Lorcan. I don't know if I could pull Rowan, but I could meet him at the anger level that he has. Like, we would be mm. equals, almost. Um, as, I feel like I could pull As. <laughs> mm. You totally could. You could pull Dorian in a heartbeat. Cool. <laughs> I hope so. Like, okay. Shit. <laughs> I'm in. You're like, okay, that's a fact. <laughs> Deal. When, where, how. You're fictional. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, <laughs> uh, they make me bothered. Like, I am bothered. Yeah. Yes. No, truly. <laughs> I don't think I could pull Reese. I don't. Really? But I'm, I love him just the same. No. He's the Why? fucking high lord. The most <laughs> powerful person. I'm sorry. Dorian is the fucking king now of uh, whatever that city is called. Okay, but Dorian doesn't mind. Dorian wouldn't mind if I'm like a little bit of a wimp. Kind of like Sorsha. Okay, my girl. <laughs> Rip. Rest in peace. Stop. But like, <laughs> I swear. Sorsha needs to die in 2023. If you say no, anything about Sorsha, Sorsha again. Will never t- no, I w- literally TikTok has even weighed in on our fucking video about Sorsha and they all side with me. No, I don't they know did. what they you're were talking like, about. Shut up. Yeah, no, they're like, like, okay. 
They were like, Fiona, she's literally irrelevant. Not to me, okay? I will never get over it. But here's the thing. I would never be able to fit no, like, fight no Alaskan bullworm. I would never be able to Uh, trick the weaver. Like, I could never pull Favor's moves. I couldn't. I just couldn't. Okay, and maybe Reese would love me in a different way. Who's to say? Oh, definitely. I definitely think so. Like, the thing is, is that, like, you don't have to be strong with Reese. I think you have to be emotionally resilient, which I think was what Feyre was. And that's why he fell in love. Cool. Okay, great. Then I can pull Reese no problem. <laughs> You're like, oh, fantastic. Cool, cool. Okay. great. If that's was the gonna... standard we're going off of, cool. <laughs> I cool. was going to say, if we were going off the standard of you, then I could definitely pull Cassian. Because I feel like oh. I could meet Nesta's level. Oh, you totally could pull Cassian. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 100%. I also think I could pull ads, honestly. Okay. Sorry, I'm not I'm not trying to steal him from you. I'm just saying I think I could. No, that's fine. Because I, I, I kind of could... could give off Gwen vibes a little. Oh, you know? 100%. Yes, yes. So. Like, Gwen is, like, gentle. And I feel like Az does have that side of him when he's not being a murderer. Um, I think you, you know could who pull... I could really pull? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I think you could pull, in my honest opinion, Sartak. And Kale. I feel like you and Kale would work in like the weirdest way ever. Count me in. Count me <laughs> fucking okay, wait, in. I, I love you, that man. I sent you that fan art of Kale, right? Did I? Yes. Right? So good. So I'm like, he's that is so... why I fell in love with him for four bucks. <laughs> he's so fine, bro. I know. Okay, who can you pull? <laughs> oh, gonna I was going to say, wait, I thought you said I could pull Kale. Yes, you could. Oh, but then you're like, who could you pull? So yes, that made it sound like you were saying that. I'm no, confused. because you, I interrupted you when you were like, you know who I could pull? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I knew it. I'm oh sorry. I would get gosh. on that coffee table with him and we would fight with swords. Like, we oh. would have a good fucking time. Oh my gosh okay also though i feel like you he could gives pull me, like i feel like he Sorry. gives frat vibes and i feel like you could pull him like that's believable to me you know what i mean i love a good frat boy yeah i don't know if i could pull room well, not though. anymore not anymore just the vibes okay let's <laughs> not anymore, not make anymore. that line Thank except you. gus i'm just kidding <laughs> fuck okay no you know who you you and rune you and rune i don't know if rune. i could pull him you well, yes maybe. you so actually could. i very much identify with um lydia like son right no son day day I'm dumb i am a fake fan now okay and just yep. as much as you are i am a fake fan <laughs> um i feel like i my attitude is very similar today where it's mm. like i I try to do everything for, like, the good of everyone, even if it means, like, risking my own life. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I could be, like her, like, her little attitude, like, snappy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, 100%. wait, no, maybe I could. Maybe I could. Thank I you. think we're just <laughs> blowing smoke up each other's ass at this point because we literally just said, oh, you could pull all of your characters. Oh, you too. You too. Don't ruin my fun. Sorry. <laughs> you know who you could really pull, though? Oh. The King of Hybern. <laughs> Aaron, why would you why would you do that? the bone carver mm. <laughs> the cereal <laughs> okay here's the thing everyone imagines the cereal to be like a man i always imagine the cereal to be a woman oh i guess i mean she's kind of like genderless but like yeah i guess i imagined the cereal as like a man that's weird. I always thought it was a woman. Interesting. The fucking um, bone weaver, right? That's no. The bone. No, carver. not the bone. No, you no, are no. such a fake fan, Selena. I am. I know. I am. This is <laughs> just embarrassing. Kidding. Just you guys. kidding. Just it's kidding. So it's so funny okay. because I have two tattoos of her books on my fucking body, and I am a <laughs> fake fan. So, um, <laughs> the bone carver and then the weaver. The weaver was always a woman. Bone Carver, I think, is genderless because he can, he, she can like morph itself into whatever. True. Like you okay, see whatever right. it is. Okay. Okay, good to know we have our gender straight. <laughs> <laughs> a 
okay um do you have anything else to add for today's episode no no i think we need I to be think cut we off end it there yeah that's what i was gonna say i yeah. feel like we better end it um okay well thank you guys so much oh wait no shoot what's our next week's episode first next week we're gonna go back into the christmas holiday spirit and we are gonna be watching and discussing the first episode of the santa clauses on disney plus which to be honest i forgot that kind of released this year yeah but i'm intrigued because again like we had talked about before it's always interesting when these networks revive these like old shows and movies so i'm i'm intrigued yeah i guess i'm intrigued too i'm like prepared to be disappointed but would yeah. love to be pleasantly surprised no. so we I shall see what happens yeah all righty pal well, oh, I, f- I felt like I was about to, like, get off of a FaceTime. I forgot we were recording for a second. Well, this could be a FaceTime. We can make this a FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.